What is up guys, welcome back to the channel, continuing with our cockpit overhead explained in the A320 aircraft. Let's go ahead and jump right back to the overhead and zoom into our next panel that we're going to talk about. In today's video we're going to talk about the JIPWIZ or EGPWS panel in the A320 aircraft. Alright, so coming to the JIPWIZ panel or the GPWS ground proximity warning system panel in the A320 aircraft, we've got a series of buttons here. We're going to go ahead and start with these two switches over here. We have TUR and SYS. TUR stands for terrain, SYS stands for system. So to fully explain the ground proximity warning system in the aircraft, you have to understand that there are different modes of the GPWS system. Certain modes will function without other modes. You can have a complete JIPWIS failure, you can have partial JIPWIS failures. The enhanced part of GPWS is the terrain function. What the terrain function does is it's a terrain category of the JIPWIS system. This is where you get a basic database of terrain around the earth and it knows where the aircraft is and it can predictively tell you when you're getting too close to terrain in a nutshell. Now, the reason you have this fault light here is because the aircraft is not aligned. If the aircraft is not aligned, it does not know where it is. If it does not know where it is, it cannot actively predict what terrain is around it. That is why we have this fault light here when the aircraft is unaligned, and this is a normal condition of the terrain push button. You can also press the switch off, deselect, and inhibit, it, inhibit the predictive mode of the ground proximity warning system. That is your terrain ahead. That is the predictive function of the GPWS. Moving over to the SIS or system, this is your basic GPWS system here. Now, if I were to turn this off and I covered up the fault light there, we can turn off the basic functions of the GPWS, but if the terrain was still on and the aircraft was aligned, the terrain function and the predictive function would still work normally. So you have two systems here within one bigger system in the ground proximity warning system of the aircraft. In normal operations, you will really never touch these unless directed to by an ECAM. Moving to the right of the panel, we have several other push buttons. We have glide slope mode, flap mode, and landing flap 3. Let's talk about glide slope mode first. Glide slope mode is a way to inhibit glide slope warnings when you're shooting an approach that does not have a usable glide slope. For instance, if you're doing a ILS approach with a glide slope inoperative, that means you are now doing a localizer approach. A lot of times on the, on the approach plates, you'll see ILS or localizer runway 26 or whatever the runway number is. That or means if you're not using the glide slope and you're just using the localizer, you're going to be doing a localizer only approach. Now the glide slope may still be producing a signal, so we come up here and we turn that off so we inhibit any false indications of a glide slope or inadvertently follow a glide slope indication on our PFD when we should not be doing it. If you're doing a basic localizer approach, you're going to turn this on. If you're doing an ILS that has a glide slope out of service, therefore doing the localizer off of an ILS, you're going to turn this push button on to inhibit any potential false glide slope indications on your PFD. Moving over to the flap mode push buttons. So the Airbus has four flap selections one, two, three, and full. So it is most common to land with flaps full. Some operators will land the 321 normally with flaps three. I know there was a US carrier that landing flap three was their SOP for quite a while for the 321. But in general, you're gonna land flaps full. Now, if you were to land flap three and you set it up properly in your MCDU and you selected flap three for landing, what will happen is as you get closer to the ground, the JIP is going to notify, hey, it looks like you're getting ready to land, but Too your low. flaps Flat. are not in the full configuration. So that is why you'll come up here and press the landing flap three push button, which will tell the computer in the JIP whiz that says, hey, it's normal that we're landing with flaps three. You don't have to yell at me saying too low flaps. Too low flaps. Now, the flap mode push button, this is used for some type of failure within the flap system. Let's say you get a flap or slat jam in flaps position two or one. Maybe you just did a takeoff and you get a flat jam, a flap jam during retraction. So now you're going to come back around and do an emergency landing in the flaps one position. 
If you get down close to the ground with the flaps in the position one, the Jip Whiz is going to go off and saying that you are too low for your current flap selection. Too low flap. You're going to get that nuisance warning. So coming up here and pressing the flap mode push button will inhibit that. So the computer will now inhibit any nuisance warnings when you are intentionally trying to land the aircraft with the flaps in any other positions than three and four. So that is your Jip Whiz ground proximity warning system panel. I know it's just a very basic explanation, but this isn't a typewriter. I'm just trying to give you guys some basic information for your cockpit overhead. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. We'll see you again here very soon.